After a crazy day one, welcome to day two <laughs> of testing here from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. As we mentioned, Marty Snyder, Townsend Bell joining you. We expect Kevin Lee here in a little bit once we see race cars on the track. Honored to have Doug Bowles, president <laughs> of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway here with us. So, Doug, kind of walk us through the, the, the end of the day yesterday, the evaluation of what's going on with the exit of Pitt Road, and what's been done overnight to get ready for today's session. Well, first of all, I, I take all this so personally, right? Oh, sure. Because you want this to be the most special racetrack in the world. And the interesting thing about it is we're in April. It is still sort of the freeze-thaw season, so there are bumps on the racetrack. Um, you could see see them around that will be gone in May just because, you know, they're in the shade. They, don't, they aren't thawing. But this had nothing to do with, the, with that. Uh, you know, actually, what, we weren't completely worried when Rossi spun because he thought, okay, it's morning, it's cold, we'll see where we go. But then when you have – when you have Elio and Will, as you guys said, I mean, two really, really experienced race car drivers have the same issue. I think we did the right thing last night, IndyCar shutting things down. We went trackside to figure it out. We had Firestone come out and help us check grip level. Grip level on the racetrack is basically the same grip level as it was last year, uh, really, really close, and the drivers felt like it was. Hmm. But there's a substantial decrease in grip level on the pit lane or the warm-up and decel lanes versus the racetrack. So we're trying to figure out exactly what, that, what, what the cause of that is. We did the RPE which we did in 2017. Same thing we did in 2017. It was better. We did both the racetrack and pit lane. 2018, we did just the racetrack. And we've all been really comfortable with it. Jay will tell you that, that it's really comfortable. They, they thought it might even be something that could help Texas Motor Speedway using it because it, it really doesn't impact the grip level off. If anything, it usually helps bring it up. We didn't do pit lane in 2018. But we did in 2019, so we brought our team in. They were two and a half hours away at another project. They got in here last night at 8.30, tried to mm. figure out what, what's going on. We did some tire dragging last night until the rains had to stop about a little before 1 o'clock last night, so we were out here doing that. And uh, we think the eye test tells you the grip level, what it will be up. Mm. The, the, the tennis shoe test tells you it will. we got to <laughs> wait for it to dry off, and Firestone will go back out and, and tell us kind of where we are. And then I think at that point – then Jay and Firestone and everybody can really sit down and evaluate whether or not we, what we need to do as it relates to pit and, lane. And to clarify, the RPE you mentioned is, is in essence a sealer, and, it's, the, and it's, the theory was to dry the track quicker in case nah, it the reason we today. It, actually, the drying of the track thing had nothing to do with okay. why we did it. It became a benefit of it that we oh. learned when it came. The reason we did it is that this, this track was resurfaced in 2004. It's got almost 3.2 million bricks still underneath it. It is Indiana weather, so you have the freeze and thaw, mm-hmm. and what happens when those bricks move, it manifests itself at the surface as water gets down in there. What this is is a penetrant. It's designed to go in the track, not mm. on the track. So it's inside the track, and it seals those tiny little g- cracks that create the weepers that we have. So that's the purpose for that. The benefit was, wow, the track dries quicker when it happens. <laughs> so what, what's different is, you know, we have never, since, since October when we did it, there have been things on the racetrack. There's been nothing on pit lanes or on the warm-up lane. So we think part of it is just nothing's been on it. So hopefully last night, and you can even see in that in that picture right there, some of that shine is gone. We spent, I don't know how many miles of tire dragging we did last night, but but from really 8 o'clock until close to 1 o'clock, we were tire dragging out here last night to try and, to try and get that better. So we'll, mm-hmm. we'll see where we, where we end up. Well, this only confirms what I've suspected for years, which is that there's every other racetrack in the world, and there's Indianapolis Motor <laughs> Speedway. You guys are operating basically like a concierge service. It's like a four seasons <laughs> of racetrack. Like, whoa, there's a tiny issue. Yeah. Shut it down. We're getting out there. I mean, you guys always do such a great job. At what point, though, do you have to just say to the drivers, Doug, guys, it's a little more slippery. you got to be careful. Yeah, you know, it's one thing to say that, right? But but you don't you want the race car. You're there, you know. And, and I agree. I think no matter what we find out today, once they get on there, that's it's we need to be careful and f- figure out where we are. What I don't want, and what, and I'm sure we can solve by race day. All you're caring about race day is get in and out of the pits and in your in and out lap as fast as you can go. So we got to make sure that the grip level is there. And and we think what we're hoping this morning is when Firestone gets out there, they can say, okay, uh, Doug and IMS team, the grip level on the, on the pit lane has gone up. And then what we'll do is just work on it to get to the point that when they get here in May and we're ready to go May 17th, that this isn't a worry at all. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of the old days, though, when these Indy cars would come on boost and you'd have to be really careful whether you want a pace lap for this mm. race or coming out of the pits. Uh, it actually, you know, part of me is like, well, that's more entertaining. Now, safety, a big issue. Yep. What happened with Will Power yesterday and with Colton Herta, super sketchy. We don't want to see that. We certainly don't want to get drivers get hurt. But I, I do think that 
introducing drivability or the, you know the, the the racecraft side of it into pit exit kind of interesting nothing you can do other than what you guys have tried to do overnight here and i'm sure that'll make a difference well we we certainly hope so and you know i, I spent last night I mean, you and i had a chance to talk to dixon and connor together as yep. they were coming out of the press conference room and i and i picked the phone up i called elio to apologize i want to make sure that elio and will and alex knew that it wasn't their fault i yep. don't want didn't want in the back of their head them thinking that something they did so i wanted to i walked them through exactly what had happened to the racetrack what have we done how the how we actually put the uh, the penetrant on the on the pit lanes and the warm up lanes so we actually did it over two days so the racetrack was done on one day and the warm up lanes and decel lanes were done on another day the in the, november it, 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 yeah it actually in october okay the uh, the the weather was different on those two days so mm-hmm. our our folks said well maybe that's part of it and then the fact that we skipped the year for the warm-up lanes may have been another contributing factor. And then as the team talked to us, they did two passes around the warm-up lane, and there was there's some thought that there was an overlap when the first pass goes in the second and that the middle might – and if you look at – if you go out and, and you saw this, the skid yeah. marks – the skid marks start, and it looks like maybe it's something in the middle of the groove there. So we spent a lot of time just going through the middle of the, of the, pit, of the warm-up planes first and then getting the rest of it. So hopefully today we're in better shape. We talked to Tony Kanaan about the sort of interaction with the drivers and, and the league and, and the track as well, and, and he talked about how important that was. Do you know what procedures will be in place today? I know there was talk of maybe carrying pit road speed all the way around to turn two. Maybe that was an option just for today only. Or will it be, you know, hey, just, just try it and everybody be careful? You know, I, I don't know. And I mean, that's really, I mean, Jay and the, and Kyle are the experts on what to do for IndyCar, right? Along mm-hmm. with the drivers. And that's a great thing about Jay and Kyle is they spend an awful lot of time talking to those drivers and they're going to figure out the best thing that works for everybody. My job is to make sure we give them a racetrack that doesn't cause these problems. So um, hopefully we'll be in a good spot. And I, you know, I talked to Tony last night as well. He, Tony helped us design our road course when we mm-hmm. redid it. Right. And so he's one of those uh, people that I always pick the phone up and say, Hey, what do you think? And, you know, he was. He said, "Look, we can we can practice. We just got to make sure people are slow in in, in the, the warm up lanes if that's what it is." And and I want to touch on something that you said a moment ago. You said I take this very personally. I can attest. I mean, I know after the NASCAR Cup Series race last year, you yep. were you were here late at night, wanting to make sure that all the teams understood what happened and explained everything. And you do take it very personally don't you to reach out to drivers so my half of indycar fans and everyone in the paddock I, I know it's tough on you but i think that personal touch means a lot to everyone well I, and for me the biggest thing is i want the drivers to know <clears throat> that we get to do this because of them it's the fans and the drivers that make this place special and i don't want in the back <clears throat> excuse me in the back of their mind them thinking it was them and yeah it absolutely yeah, wasn't yeah. i had a conversation with joseph last night too and just to figure out <clears throat> what he thought about it and he said and then he kind of started talking about worried about maybe <clears throat> is this something that's at the track yeah too? i said no here's the grip level he said oh good i feel much better now so just <laughs> making sure they know it's not them it's something we did we're going to fix it we got the greatest partner in the world in firestone this is absolutely not a firestone thing this is an indianapolis mm-hmm. motor speedway asphalt thing that we're going to fix but we have a great partner in Firestone who's out there helping us figure out the grip level, helping us think through, is this the right process in the short term right now to make it better for today? And, and I couldn't you know, thank Kara and the team enough for hanging around late last night and, and doing a grip level test on the whole, the whole racetrack. Now we just need Mother, Mother Nature to cooperate. So if you can call Governor Holcomb, and make something <laughs> happen here so we can get on the racetrack very soon, that's what we would love. Yeah, it's a lot more fun when we're on the track than we're doing this stuff. Right. Yep. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Doug. Yep.